We have wonderful news. Why do you always do that? You come flouncing in here with news and expect us to drop everything. Well, for once, just don't tell us, all right? All right, I won't. Guess. <laughs> you won the lottery. No. Someone you know won the lottery. No. Someone you don't know won the lottery, and they're being admitted here. <laughs> Last night, the hospital held a bachelor auction for charity, and when it came time to bid on a date with me, I made more money than anyone. $1,000. No. $2,000. Julie. $40,000. <gasps> Someone paid $40,000 for a date with yours truly. $40,000 for one night? Guess now you got something to fall back on if this hospital thing don't work. <laughs> <laughs> the bid was made by a corporate proxy. I'll probably have to go out with one of those jowly CEOs. Ew. What? I just splashed on Lee Iacocca in a Speedo. <laughs> you know, it might not even be a date. It's just some corporation's way of making a public donation. It was made by the Nortent Corporation. Anybody like anagrams? Love them with a glass of cold milk. Mm. <laughs> anagrams. Scrambling the letters of one word to make another word. Uh, for example, Nortent unscrambles quite nicely to read Trenton. I bought the date. 40000 for an evening with a woman of my dreams. Well, here's an anagram I have already unscrambled for you, Jack. Not a chance in hell. <laughs> find Gina Cuevas? <laughs> I am her father, Vargas Cuevas. I thought so. You two look exactly alike. Except for the hairline. <laughs> the mouth is different. Her eyes are wider apart. <laughs> of course, she's a woman and you're a man. Hmm. You must be Julie Milbury. <laughs> Papa? Oh, surprise, Nita. <laughs> I have come to America to see you. And, of course, little Juanita. Oh, what a wonderful surprise. <laughs> Gina, if I had known, I would have given you the day off. So why didn't you call? What? And take a chance of talking to him. <laughs> no, no, no. I tell you, Gina, you are my daughter, and I love you dearly. But I want nothing to do with this Hank Kaplan. Well, avoiding him is certainly a step up from wanting to kill him with your bare hands. Ah, yes, my postcard, yes. <laughs> I am over that, you know. So, is this your first trip to America? Ah, uh, yes, my first and last. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, so am I. You know, for years I carried on a distant love affair with your country. Yes. Oh, I dreamed of roaming the aisles of a Walmart superstore. <laughs> Or savoring a racinette? Oh. Well, you can do all that now. No, 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 no. Nothing is as I pictured it. Everything is smaller, grayer, uglier. Oh. And the people, they walk around as if hypnotized, with looks of bovine stupefaction on their faces. So you've been to them all? Oh, yes. <laughs> Papa, hmm? your opinion of America is colored by your feelings towards Hank. Oh, nonsense, Gina. I have an objective eye. Oh, and this eye cannot wait to see his new granddaughter. <laughs> oh, God. I hope she doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> well, I have to get back to work. Maybe you could wait here. Oh, Paco. Paco Ortiz. Say hello to my father, Vargas Cuevas. Oh, hola. Paco Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, you'll be all right. Oh, yes, go on, Gene. I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Senor, um, I heard about what happened in San Pequeño between you and Hank. Oh, 
He's really not that bad a guy. You probably shouldn't kill him. I have no intention of harming him. He would know this if he asked me, but he has no courage. You see, you are clearly more of a man than he. What is it that you do here? I'm an orderly. So you give the orders. <laughs> you are the man in charge. Well... One of the people, sure. You see, if only Gina had married you instead... Oh, no, 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 that wouldn't be right. Hmm? Uh, sure, I may look like the perfect husband, perfect man, but... I got a wildness in me. Sooner or later, I get itchy, because I'm the kind of guy that just can't be tied down. Plus, I still live with my parents. Annie, I am in such a quandary about this date with Jack. Oh, how about that? See ya. No, wait. No, yeah. If I don't go, the charity and my reputation suffer. You're right. Go. No, wait. If I do go, then I have to spend the evening with Jack. You're right. Don't go. No, Annie, wait. I need to hear the pros and cons of this situation voiced aloud. Now, you take the pro side, and I'll take the con. I'll go first. Jack's a weasel. Can't argue with that. <laughs> I need your help. Now, just pretend to be on Jack's side. Oh, all right. Well, you should go out with Jack because he's rich, so you know you'll get a good meal out of it. Uh-huh. Plus, you did make a commitment to charity. True. And who knows? Maybe he'll discover he has nothing in common with you, and maybe he'll finally get off your back. So, do it. Go out with me. Oh, all right, Annie. So, if you were in my shoes, you'd go on the date. Hell no. <laughs> I would rather slam my hand in a car door than go on a date with Jack Crown. Was there a rule a doctor can't spend a little time in a broom closet? Now, you think my father still wants to kill you? Yeah, I would refer you to the postcard sticking on our refrigerator. Oh, he was just kidding about strapping you to two burros and having them tear you apart. Very funny. The important thing is, Hunter, we are a family now, yeah. so please, he's come a long way. Make an effort. He's got a good heart. He'll reciprocate. All right, all right. For you, I will do my best. Gina! I... Oh, it's... him. <laughs> Senior Cuevas, great to see you. Hey, uh, listen, what do you say? Uh, we let bygones be bygones, and, uh, you know, if there's anything I can do to make your stay more comfortable, don't hesitate to ask. Well, I was going to ask where the men's room is, but I will save that question for a real man. He's giving you an opening, Frank. Take it. Papa, did huh? you enjoy your tour of the hospital? Oh, 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 yes, I did. Especially the maternity wing. Although I did not have the opportunity to ask the young mothers how many were carrying Hank Kaplan's child. <laughs> Gina, I give up. Until he's gone, my address is Motel 8. So, you are afraid of me. You wanted to kill me. Do you honestly believe that I would leave my granddaughter without a father, you fool? All right, that's Thanks. enough. That's enough from both of you. Now, we are going home to have dinner together like a real family. Oh, dinner like a real family. You mean a family where a suitor asks permission of the father before getting married, rather than impregnating his virgin daughter before wedlock? Oh, what the hell? I'm famished. Jack, I was torn between accepting and canceling. And in the end, I chose the alternative that would do the least damage to my reputation. What's that supposed to mean? I'm going. We're going on a... I'm going. No, say it. Say the words. We're going... We're going on a date, okay? Okay. <laughs> well, that was worth 15 grand right there. <laughs> there's, just, there's just one stipulation. Yes? You only have me from 8 to 10 and not a minute longer. 
Oh, well, if I only get you for two hours, I don't want you at all. Great. Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'll take you for the two hours. Now, my limo will pick you up at 7.45. Dress formally, yet comfortably. What are we doing? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Got you hooked, don't I? Jack, what are you up to? Where are we? Let there be lights. <laughs> yes, Casey, the course is all ours. Eighteen holes undisturbed. We'll also be enjoying a seven-course meal as we go. Uh, champagne? Miniature golf. Mm-hmm. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. Oh, I put a lot of thought into this. And I've spared no expense. Angus putters. <laughs> Angus? I lost. Jack made me a very attractive offer. Well, you try finding a Scottish caddy in Miami at short notice. Well, I suppose you want to humiliate me by watching me putt in a gown. Humiliation is the farthest thing from my mind. Then you want me to be overwhelmed by the zany charm of the whole idea. No, no, not overwhelmed. But if you're a least little bit taken with the idea and you were kind enough to let me know, boy, that would make my evening. You're a strange man, Jack Trent. Okay, that'll hold you for a while. <laughs> Angus, balls. Uh, no way am I calling him Angus. No, uh, after you. Yeah, you got lucky right off the bat. That was not luck, buddy. I know how to hit the ball. Oh. Okay, well, we'll see. You have 17 more chances to see if your luck holds out. And you have 17 more chances to eat my dust. Hung, why don't you eat something? You know, when a man no longer enjoys his wife's cooking, it could be a sign of trouble in the marriage. I'm just saying. Our marriage is not in trouble. Oh. Well, he's probably just worried about money. Well, if I were in his financial shape, I would be worried too. I'm just saying. <laughs> As I recall, you and Mama had hard times early in your marriage too. When did she tell you that? Whenever I seemed to be momentarily free of guilt. <laughs> well, I was able to pull us through those difficult times. I mean, I cannot say I actually enjoyed shaving and powdering the back of a wealthy landowner, but hey, I was working. I worked very hard, Papa. If a man can't provide for his family, then he probably is not a man. I'm just saying. All right, that is enough. Senor, if you can't accept the fact that Gina and I are family, you can get out now. What's it gonna be? Well, that is the first honest thing you have said to me since I have been here. And I deserved it. Yes, I can be a real bastard. <laughs> In fact, I am known as the bastard of San Pequeño. No one ever called you that. Oh, yes, a couple of guys last month, yes. <laughs> you know, I may have been wrong about him, Gina. Maybe he does have character. Maybe I was wrong about him, too. And I'd be happy to call him a bastard. <laughs> Please do. Yes, yes, yes. Well, as long as it is said in an affectionate and respectful way, just as I might uh, call you an idiot. It's nice to see you two finally getting along. Damn. That drawbridge would have been down. I'd have made a two instead of a three. You know, your competitiveness may have served you well in the business world, but on the miniature golf course, it makes you look foolish. One. Oh, oh come on. I'm serious. That was a stroke. Oh, come on. Yes, I as just... your Scottish caveat, agree with her. <laughs> but 
it was a stroke. It... You want me to play the part or what? You were talking and you blew my concentration, which is exactly what you intended. That is a childish accusation if I ever heard one. No, no, there's nothing childish about the desire to excel in whatever endeavor you're faced with. Not childish, not childish at all. Oh, hole in one, hole in one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you are not a good sport. You're not even a good player. Like you'd know. Oh, I forgot to mention that I once dated a miniature golfer. Not a big man, but did he know his way around the length? <laughs> by the way, you're down by three strokes. Hookman. <laughs> Tell me again, the, the actress playing the woman who's a slowly dying, you saw her in another program? Yes, yeah, she played an inflatable doll who comes to life and solves other people's problems. <laughs> did she die on that program too? Not intentionally, no. Damn, more commercials. Ah, at last! Oh, I thought they would never come. I can't believe he actually likes commercials. Well, it's because they are so spirited. We all know how the story will end with the sick woman. I mean, certainly she suffers with greater skill. But how can she compare with this? <laughs> Potato chips performing a ballet! <laughs> oh. well, I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. Ah. Good night, Papa. Good night. Good night. Uh, Hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A boxing match between soda pop cans. I love it. <laughs> well, good. Earlier today, I didn't think there was anything about America you liked. Well, yes, I was tense. I had many mixed feelings. What would it be like to see Gina and the baby? To see you? Well, one mixed feeling. To be honest, I was a little tense myself. You know, it's a pity that the foods we see in commercials are available only to a privileged few. Oh, not on your life, senor. Not in America. This is wonderful! Oh, oh, I am so grateful to you for taking me to that brilliantly lit food bazaar, huh? In such an easily accessible array of essentials for modern life. What was the name of it? 7-Eleven. <laughs> and yet, that it is open all day and all night. I would call it 24 and be done with it. <laughs> Oh, Hank, uh, I happen to notice uh, while going through your utility bills that it says Kaplan Cuevas. Well, uh, Jean is very proud of the Cuevas name and she wants to keep it. Ah, <laughs> she is a very independent woman. <laughs> Tell me about it. Oh, so much like her mother, too. Mm. In fact, Hank, I have never told this to anyone before. Gina's mother is always the aggressor in bed. Are you shocked? No, I'm glad you told me. You know something, Hank? It thrills me. I bet it does. I bet it does. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what thrills me about Jean in bed is the sound she makes. You know, she starts off with this little whimper and then it moves into a full-throated animal. <laughs> That's my daughter you're talking about. Sorry, sorry. Want a Pop-Tart? Trenton trails McAfee by one stroke. He has to sink this putt to stay in the game. He knows he can't blow it. He knows how humiliating it would be to lose to this woman. He knows... Angus. I know. Hey, what are you guys looking at? Look away! Look away! Are you sure you don't want to go first? Because, you know, you do have the honors. Oh, no, I'll wait. I'd rather see you choke before I put you away. Oh! Oh, 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 oh I was psyched. Well, uh, I guess this means that if you take two strokes, we tie. But if it's three, then I win. Oh, will you look at the time? 
Why, it's 10 o'clock, and you said two hours and not a minute more. So, I guess you have to go. Sorry you have to forfeit, but I'm sure that you feel that it's not the winning or the losing. You know I don't feel like that. You're right. Well, which would you prefer? My forfeiting and going home, or my sticking around and beating you? You're asking if I'd rather be a lonely winner or a loser with companionship? Very well put. If you were me, which would you prefer? Oh, we're not talking about me, we're talking about you. I want to talk about you. Oh, I asked you first. I guess you're afraid to answer. I'm not afraid of who I am. Are you afraid to show that to me? Are you? I asked you first. I'm going to putt now. <laughs> Sure, now you say that. Oh, you're not going to be a sore loser, are you? No, 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 I'm not a sore loser. In fact, come on, let's hear it once again for our lovely winner, Casey McAvee. <laughs> All right, that's it, that's enough. Grab your sterno and get out. You too, Scotty. <laughs> An infomercial is a commercial, yes, but with layers of meaning not possible in the short form. <laughs> too bad you have to leave. Ah, uh, well, I cannot leave Mama alone too long. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Mama can't leave you alone either. <laughs> Hans, what are you saying about my mother? <laughs> I'll tell you later. No, you won't. <laughs> Adios, adios. 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 Huh? Heard you played miniature golf. Was that Jack's idea of a joke? I guess. The whole evening was sort of silly. I won. <laughs> Not that it matters. No, it doesn't. I did win. I saw a different Jack last night. You know, for a while I forgot all about the stuff he pulls when he's here. It was just the two of us and the game. Did you have a good time, Casey? No, actually, I did. There was something, oh, how should I put this, exhilarating about mopping up the course with you. Well, I knew you'd feel that way, and that's why I let you win. Let me win? Of course. Oh, what do you think, that someone with my natural ability would slice it right into the pirate's nostril? Oh, and then ship it under the alligator? Well, yes, I was giving you a break. Oh, Jack, you're so sad. You don't even have the poise to lose gracefully. Okay, look, what I'm saying is if I were playing for real, you wouldn't have a prayer. I know what you're trying to do, Jack. You're trying to suck me into another date. Oh, no, I'm not. I would never do that. And besides, it's obvious you're too chicken to take me up on it anyway. You're on, Jack. Anytime, anywhere. Best 40 grand I ever spent. Funny, but Jack and Casey actually seem to enjoy mixing it up like that. I am sick and tired of you hovering over me like this. I'm not taking orders from you anymore. What? It's fun, isn't it? Mixing it up like that? Come on, Annie, let's get something going. Get back to work. Right. <laughs> You again. Look, just give it up. We have nothing in common. That's enough from both of you. We are going home to have dinner together, like a real family. Oh, dinner like a real family. You mean a family where a suitor asks permission of the father before getting married, rather than impregnating his virgin daughter before wedlock? Oh, what the hell, I'm famished. <laughs> I was torn between accepting and canceling. And in the end, I chose the alternative that would do the least damage to my reputation. What's that supposed to mean? I'm going. We're going on a... I'm going. No, 
say it. Say the words. We're going... We are going on a date, okay? Okay. <laughs> well, that was worth 15 grand right there. <laughs> there's, just, there's just one stipulation. Yes? You only have me from 8 to 10 and not a minute longer. Oh, well, if I only get you for two hours, I don't want you at all. Great. Just kidding. <laughs> No, I'll take you for the two hours. Now, my limo will pick you up at 7.45. Dress formally, yet comfortably. What are we doing? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Got you hooked, don't I? Jack, what are you up to? Where are we? Let there be lights. <laughs> Yes, Casey, the course is all ours. 18 holes undisturbed. We'll also be enjoying a seven-course meal as we go. Uh, champagne? Miniature golf. Mm-hmm. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. Oh, I put a lot of thought into this. And I've spared no expense. Angus putters. <laughs> uh-huh. Plus, you did make a commitment to charity. True? And who knows? Maybe he'll discover he has nothing in common with you, and maybe he'll finally get off your back. So, do it. Go out with me. Uh oh, all right, Annie. So, if you were in my shoes, you'd go on the date. Hell no. <laughs> I would rather slam my hand in a car door than go on a date with Jack Crown. Is there a rule that a doctor can't spend a little time in a broom closet? Now, you think my father still wants to kill you? Yeah, I would refer you to the postcard sticking on our refrigerator. Oh, man, he was just kidding about strapping you to two burros and having them tear you apart. Very funny. The important thing is, Hunter, we are a family now, yeah. so please, he's come a long way. Make an effort. He's got a good heart. He'll reciprocate. All right, all right. For you, I will do my best. Jenna! I... Oh, it's him. <laughs> Senior Cuevas, great to see you. Hey, uh, listen, what do you say? Uh, we let bygones be bygones, and, uh, you know, if there's anything I can do to make your stay more comfortable, don't hesitate to ask. Well, I was going to ask where the men's room is, but I will save that question for a real man. He's giving you an opening, Hank. Take it. Papa, did you huh? enjoy your tour of the hospital? Oh, 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 yes, I did. Especially the maternity wing. Although I did not have the opportunity to ask the young mothers how many were carrying Hank Kaplan's child. <laughs> Gina, I give up. Until he's gone, my address is Motel 8. So, you are afraid of me. You wanted to kill me. Do you honestly believe that I would leave my granddaughter without a father, you fool? Well, that's enough. That's... Erica is colored by your feelings towards Hank. Oh, nonsense, Gina. I have an objective eye. Oh, and this eye cannot wait to see his new granddaughter. <laughs> oh, God. I hope she doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> Well, I have to get back to work. Maybe you could wait here. Oh, Paco! Paco Ortiz, say hello to my father, Vargas Cuevas. Oh, hola! Paco Ortiz! <laughs> Papa, you'll be all right. Oh, yes, go on, Gina. I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Senor, um, I heard about what happened in San Pequeño between you and Hank. Oh, God. He's really not that bad a guy. You probably shouldn't kill him. <laughs> I have no intention of harming him. He would know this if he asked me, but he has no courage. You see, you are clearly more of a man than he. What is it that you do here? I'm an orderly. So you give the orders. <laughs> you are the man in charge. Well... One of the people, sure. You see, if only Gina had married you instead... Oh, no, 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 that wouldn't be right. Hmm? Ah, sure, I may look like the perfect husband, perfect man, but I got a wildness in me. <laughs> Sooner or later, I get itchy, because I'm the kind of guy that just can't be tied down. 
Plus, I still live with my parents. Annie, I am in such a quandary about this date with Jack. Oh, how about that? See ya. No, wait. No. If I don't go, the charity and my reputation suffer. You're right. Go. No, but wait. If I do go, then I have to spend the evening with Jack. You're right. Don't go. Now, Annie, wait. I need to hear the pros and cons of this situation voiced aloud. Now, you take the pro side, and I'll take the con. I'll go first. Jack's a weasel. Can't argue with that. <laughs> I need your help. Now, just pretend to be on Jack's side. Oh, all right. Well, you should go out with Jack because... He's rich, so you know you'll get a good meal out of it. Oh, pardon me. Could you tell me where I might find Gina Cuevas? I am her father, Vargas Cuevas. I thought so. You two look exactly alike. Except for the hairline. The mouth is different. Her eyes are wider apart. Of course, she's a woman and you're a man. Hmm. You must be Julie Milbury. Papa? Oh, surprise, Nita. I have come to America to see you. And, of course, little Juanita. Oh. What a wonderful surprise. Gina, if I had known, I would have given you the day off. So why didn't you call? What? And take a chance of talking to him. <laughs> no, no, no. I tell you, Gina, you are my daughter, and I love you dearly. But I want nothing to do with this Hank Kaplan. Well, avoiding him is certainly a step up from wanting to kill him with your bare hands. <laughs> ah, yes, my postcard, yes. <laughs> I am over that, Gina. Oh, is this your first trip to America? Ah, uh, yes, my first and last. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, yeah, so am I. You know, for years, I carried on a distant love affair with your country. Yes. Oh, I dreamed of roaming the aisles of a Walmart superstore. <laughs> or savoring a racinette. Oh. Well, you can do all that now. No, 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 no. Nothing is as I pictured it. Everything is smaller, grayer, uglier. Oh. And the people... They walk around as if hypnotized, with looks of bovine stupefaction on their faces. So you've been to them all? Oh, yes. <laughs> Papa, hmm? your opinion of a man... I have wonderful news. Why do you always do that? You come flouncing in here with news and expect us to drop everything. Well, for once, just don't tell us, all right? All right, I won't. Guess. You won the lottery? No. Someone you know won the lottery? No. Someone you don't know won the lottery, and they're being admitted here. <laughs> Last night, the hospital held a bachelor auction for charity, and when it came time to bid on a date with me, I made more money than anyone. $1,000. No, $2,000. Julie. $40,000. <gasps> Someone paid $40,000 for a date with yours truly. $40,000 for one night? Guess now you got something to fall back on if this hospital thing don't work. <laughs> the bid was made by a corporate proxy. I'll probably have to go out with one of those jowly CEOs. Ew. What? I just splashed on Lee Iacocca in a Speedo. <laughs> you know, it might not even be a date. It's just some corporation's way of making a public donation. It was made by the... Nortent Corporation. Anybody like anagrams? Love them with a glass of cold milk. Mm. <laughs> anagrams. Scrambling the letters of one word to make another word. Uh, for example, Nortent unscrambles quite nicely to read Trenton. I bought the date. <laughs> 40,000 for an evening with a woman of my dreams. Well, here's an anagram I have already unscrambled for you, Jack. Not a chance in hell. 